the 28th of November. Today we commemorate our Holy Father, Confessor and Martyr, Stephen the New, Protector of the Icons. Saint Stephen, the equal of the first martyr, was born into a noble family in Constantinople. His pious parents had long been childless, and at his birth, which followed an apparition of the Most Holy Mother of God, they vowed to consecrate the child to God. Baptized by the Holy Patriarch Germanus, and placed under the protection of the protomartyr Stephen, the boy grew in wisdom and in virtue, not turning aside after vain things which cannot profit the soul, but applying himself rather to the practice of meekness and humility. When the time came for his parents to fulfill their promise of consecrated him to God, Leo III, the Isaurian, had already embarked on the policy of forbidding the veneration of holy images and was persecuting the defenders of orthodoxy. So they decided it would be prudent to leave the city of Constantinople, where the imperial heretic was doing his worst, and to entrust Stephen to the monks of Mount, of Mount St. Oxentius near Nicomedia. These holy monastics received the 16-year-old boy with joy and clothed him in the angelic habit that very day. Saint Stephen became the disciple of John, an elder experienced in the ascetic art of prayer, who possessed the gift of foreknowledge and who was himself the fifth successor of Saint Oxentius. Stephen showed perfect obedience and as much zeal in fulfilling the most laborious duties as he did for the praise of God. On the death of his father, Stephen went back to Constantinople, he disposed of the family estate and distributed the proceeds to the poor. He returned to Mount Oxentius along with his mother and one of his sisters, who both became nuns in the women's monastery nearby. His other sister also became a nun, and she entered a convent in the city of Constantinople. John, his spiritual father, gave up his soul to God soon after, and the brethren unanimously chose Stephen to succeed him as an abbot. Under his careful direction and by reason of his great humility, the small group of ascetics increased to twenty brethren and became a Kenobitic monastery. Having so ordered their common life that it might be a true image of the kingdom of heaven, the saint himself withdrew a short distance away to give himself undistracted to silent, continuous prayer and left one of his disciples to be the abbot. His new cell was roofless. It was open to the weather and so narrow that he could scarcely crouch down into it. Clad in the same thin garment in all weathers, winter and summer, his body loaded with iron chains and making do with just enough food to sustain life, St. Stephen made great progress in contemplation and unintentionally attracted numerous disciples and visitors who spread his renown throughout the empire. On the death of Emperor Leo in 741, his son, Constantine V, was crowned emperor. He kept his iconoclastic intentions to himself until he had dealt with the Arab threat in the East. But then, with his authority firmly established, he commenced a violent attack on icons and those who venerated them. On his orders, the churches were despoiled, sacred vessels which were adorned with icons were desecrated, frescoes were whitewashed over, holy images on wood were burned. Only paintings of secular subjects were allowed, and the cross alone was accepted as worthy of veneration. All who opposed this policy were severely punished, and especially the monks. Harassed, 
exiled and tortured, many of them bent their steps towards Mount St. Oxentius, to the monastery there, to find in St. Stephen strength and encouragement to persevere in the confession of orthodoxy. He advised them to leave for regions unaffected by the emperor's war against the holy icons, the Black Sea, the Persian Gulf, Cyprus, the coast of Syria, and above all, the south of Italy, where thousands of monks took refuge at that time. In 754, the tyrant gathered together a false council at the Hiera Palace of more than 300 of his compliant bishops and made them decree abolition of the veneration of icons and approbation of some foolish doctrines of his own, for he prided himself on his theology. On the strength of that decree, the emperor ordered the destruction of holy images everywhere and their replacement by representations of himself and of secular subjects. Even the relics of the saints were destroyed, and they even went as far as to condemn the veneration of the mother of God and of the saints. Everywhere, the confessors of orthodoxy were beaten and imprisoned and burned to death. Then they began a methodical persecution of the monks who were less deferential than bishops to imperial authority and always ready to resist emperors who fell away from the faith. The monasteries were closed. Some were used as barracks, as baths, or for other public purposes. The monks were subjected to insults and risked torture unless they would dress as laymen and marry. Those who refused were mutilated or brutally treated in other ways before being sent into exile. Regardless of the consequences, St. Stephen continued steadfast in his opposition and everyone recognized him as leader of the Orthodox. When he was cited to go to Constantinople to subscribe the decrees of the heretical council, he would not accept the summons from the imperial officials who brought it, and he boldly dismissed them. The emperor then started a scandalous rumor to discredit the saint in the eyes of the, his numerous supporters, putting it about that he had impure relations with one of his spiritual daughters, an honorable nun called Anna, and they paid false witnesses to testify to the fact before the emperor. The nun Anna was brought to Constantinople to answer to the tyrant. She was cruelly tortured for rejecting the foul allegations, but the saint remained unscathed. In the end, they hatched another plot and arrested him, pretending that he had compelled a young favorite of the emperor to become a monk by force. While he was held prisoner in a monastery in Constantinople, his own monastery was set on fire and all his disciples were scattered. On being brought out to answer before the imperial theologians, he brilliantly upheld the tradition of the Holy Fathers. He mocked his accusers when they presented him with the alternatives of accepting the decisions of the council or of dying in torments. He showed how the decisions of their council were foreign to the tradition and clearly heretical, so that it was not really a council at all. And he pointed out that the six truly ecumenical councils had all met in icon-adorned churches. Exile to an island, he undertook new ascetic feasts, making his abode in a small cell on the top of a pillar. He found such favor with God that he worked many miracles for those who sought him out and confessed the holy orthodox faith by venerating the image of Christ. The renown of the saint increased even more because of these miracles and gave strength to the orthodox, for holiness like his would indeed have been far to seek among the heretics. Intending to put an end to the saint's influence, 
the emperor had him transferred to the jail of the Praetorium in Constantinople. In the jail, he joined 342 other monks who were confessors of the true faith. All bore in their bodies the marks of their glorious combats. Some had suffered the loss of their ears, of their eyes, of their noses, their tongues. Others had been shamefully treated and were covered in filth. When he saw them, the saint wept as he glorified their faith and their endurance. He gave new courage to the disheartened, exhorting them to remain steadfast on the rock of the faith to the very end of the contest, and he united them into a single body under his powerful spiritual authority. In spite of the restrictions under which they were placed, Stephen ordered their prison life around the never-ceasing praise of God, as in a monastery where all are of the same mind. Even their jailers were converted to orthodoxy as they listened with wonder to the tales of the struggles of the holy confessors. After eleven months of imprisonment, Stephen received the revelation that his death was near at hand. He entered upon a 40-day fast, during which he taught the way of salvation to his disciples day and night. Then, when the last day came, he ordered an all-night vigil to be kept, so that God would give him strength for the final contest. All over the city, notice of the death sentence pronounced on the leader of the Orthodox had been posted up by order of the emperor in order to frighten people who were concealing monks or confessors of the faith in their homes. In the commotion that followed, the mob itself, roused up and frightened by the soldiers, broke open the jail, seized the saint, and dragged him through the streets, showering him with blows and insults. When the mob got as far as the church of St. Theodore, one of the miscreants hit him on the head with a wooden beam, breaking open his skull and spilling his brains over the ground. The corpse of the saint was then dreadfully mutilated and thrown into the common ditch reserved for idolaters. This happened on the 28th of November, 766, when Saint Stephen was 53 years old. Blessed is our God, always now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Thee, our God, glory to Thee. O Heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O Good One. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Trained on the mountain in a 
ascetical labors, with the whole armor of the cross thou didst vanquish the spiritual arrays of unseen enemies. And when thou hadst stripped thyself with great courage for contest, thou didst slay Copronymus with the sword of the true faith. For both these things hast thou been crowned by God, O righteous martyr, blessed even of great renown. I will open my mouth, and with the Spirit will it be filled, and I shall utter discourse unto the Queen and Mother, and shall appear, keeping splendid festival and rejoicing, I will hymn her wonders. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Joyfully walking the narrow path of asceticism, O blessed Stephen, thou didst straighten thine adversary's attacks with the breath of martyrdom, and thou hast inherited spaciousness of life. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. A once barren root, the namesake of Hannah, bears thee like Samuel of old, and she gives thee to God as a gift, O wise Father, signifying the grace of thy life. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us, sacredly adding thyself to the divine order of monks, O Stephen, thou shones out the virtues like a very splendid star, mystically illuminating the faithful. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. By constricting thy body with enclosure in a narrow dwelling, thou madest thy mind to soar to the heavens, O wise Stephen, being enlarged right well with divine ascents, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. With sacred voices let us, a sacred people, glorify, O Holy Lady, the impossible gate, the undefiled temple of purity, her who is beautiful among women. O Theotokos, thou living in abundant fountain, in thy divine glory establish those who hymn thee and spiritually form themselves into a choir and vouchsafe unto them crowns of glory. Holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Thy mind made comely through aspirations toward God, appeared most beautiful, truly full of every gift of grace, and a partaker of the divine brightness, O Father Stephen. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. In the might of the divine spirit, O Blessed One, thou didst show thine abhorrence for the impious king's impious decree by venerating the worshipful icon of Christ and of her that gave him birth. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. With iron doth the madman bind thee, who hast an iron heart, O all-blessed Stephen, and he sendeth thee to the guardhouse as the guardian of faithful teachings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Gloriously did thy comely feet tread the paths of martyrdom in the sight of all, crushing the heads of the adversaries, O righteous Father, Noble-spirited Stephen, both now and forever to the ages of ages, amen. From thee, who alone art pure in the word, God transcendent, become incarnate in a manner that he knoweth, and he hath saved us who worship his divine condescension, which he hath shown us in his compassion. Thou art a pattern unto monks, O wise Stephen, And thou art also the adornment of athletes, since thou, O wondrous Father, wast made fair in both. Hence thou also hast received double crowns for thy labors, both for great ascetic feats and martyric contentions. Now make entreaty earnestly with Christ, for us who love thee, O Stephen, in songs of praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O all-hymned Virgin, and our most holy Lady, 
refuge for all those in misfortunes and sufferings, the sinner's reconciliation unto God. Save us from adversities, from men's guile and their evil, from the fearful punishment and dishonorable passions. For with undoubting faith and steadfast hope, we ever call on thee, seeking thy mighty help. Seated in glory upon the throne of the Godhead, Jesus, most divine, has come on a light cloud, and with his incorrupt arm has saved those who cry, Glory to thy power, O Christ. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Shining with the light of the Spirit, O God-inspired Father Stephen, thou gave sight to the blind through thine divine intercessions, imitating thy Master and God. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. To the seafarers that invoked thy name with faith, O blessed Father Stephen, Thou didst appear from afar, piloting them to a tranquil port by divine grace. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. When thou wast sacrificed as a sacred victim, thou wast offered to him that was sacrificed for thee, O Stephen, and with gladness took up thy rest in the tents of the firstborn. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. At thy holy word, O martyr, he that was once half withered found himself every whit whole, and he was astounded at the grace so abundantly given thee from above for the preservation of man both now and ever and unto ages of ages. On thee, O all-blameless one, have I set my hope of salvation. To thy shelter have I fled. Be my help, O maiden, drawing me out from the mist of sufferings. All things are filled with awe at thy divine glory, for thou, O virgin, who hast not known wedlock, didst contain within thy womb him who is God over all, and gave its birth to the timeless Son, granting peace unto all who him thee. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Our God, the only setter of the contest, who gave thee might against the blood guilty, truly crowned thine ascetical travails with martyric honor, O righteous Stephen. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Contending gloriously, O martyr, thou didst acquire a multitude of fellow martyrs, while in prison, for encircling thee like stars, about a never-setting sun, they shone all the brighter. Holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. With divine words we bless thee, three hundred and two score, and two sacred confessors and emulators of the divine passion, who overthrew the godless. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In behalf of the icon of Christ, the glorious assembly of the righteous endured like children at play the plucking out of their hair, the severing of their ears and hands, and the burning of their divine limbs. Both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. O transcendently holy Virgin, who alone on earth truly gave its birth to the transcendently holy God, Sanctify and save by thy mediation them that ever proclaim thee to be the Theotokos. Celebrating this divine and most honored festival of the Mother of God, come you divinely wise, let us clap our hands and glorify God who was born of her. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. The inventor of evil could not bear the power of thy words, O Stephen, Wherefore, with exceeding ferocity, the deceiver gave thee over to bonds, punishments, and a violent death. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Baked like bread in the fire, and mercilessly hanged by thy feet, O Paul, thou hast made a whole burnt oblation, and offered to God as a sacrifice, being deemed worthy of dwelling together with the martyrs. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Shut up in prison, eight and thirty monks lawfully strove in Ephesus, and ended their life by strangulation, 
with faith and longing, let us call them blessed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Staunchly did thou oppose the judge, O wonder-worthy Peter, great of fame, and though thy body was stoned with wounds, thou didst choose to receive death for the sake of Christ, who alone is immortal, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. With undoubting heart let us call our Immaculate Lady Blessed, the only all laudable, the fair among women, the genitress of God, the indestructible wall of Christians. On this day the Church of Christ keepeth a feast day and a joyous festival upon thy holy memory. Singing thy praise, she doth cry with faith. Thou, O divine, Stephen, art the boast of all the saints. The sound of thine achievements has truly run throughout all the earth, O wise, righteous martyr, all of which thou wroughtest in a wondrous manner. Wherefore, I beseech thee, since thou hast boldness with God, O righteous Stephen, entreat him that I be given a word worthy of acclaiming the struggles thou hast undergone from enemies visible and invisible. First, deadening all the movements of the flesh, thou didst destroy them through asceticism, and now through thy contest thou hast vanquished the tyrants, O boast of the saints. O boast of the saints. The divinely wise youth worshipped not a creation rather than the Creator, but manfully trampling the threat of fire underfoot, they rejoiced, chanting, Blessed art thou, the all-hymned God of our fathers. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Thy blessed in was revealed to thee by the will of the Creator of all, wherefore giving thyself over to yet greater asceticism, thou wentest from glory to glory and wast put to death for Christ, the God over all. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Thou hast been glorified with the first athlete whose name thou bearest, and when thou wast mercilessly stoned, dragged, and beaten, thou didst cover the earth with thy blood, and didst joyously surrender thy soul unto God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When thou wast ruthlessly dragged through the city streets, O martyr Stephen, thou madest the path of martyrdom smooth for the faithful, and walking therein with fortitude, they truly arrived at the heavenly city. Both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. In ancient times the most sacred prophets manifestly revealed the mystery of thine august childbirth, O pure one, and now clearly perceiving the fulfillment we reverently call thee blessed. The birth-giving of the Theotokos saved the pious children of furnace, then in figure, but now indeed, and it moves all the world to chant to thee, Him, you the Lord, and exalt him supremely for all ages. Holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Like utterly frenzied beasts, they that perpetually pass their lives in iniquity, seize the Lamb of Christ, smiting him, slaying him, and burying him with lawless man. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. The enemy savagely crushed thy head, which God in the highest crowned with the crown of victory. O much contending crown bearer Stephen, glory of the martyrs and of all the righteous. O holy martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Staunchly opposing the persecutor, the godly minded Andrew is mangled with wounds and the just man is mercilessly put to death, singing to the Master Christ unto the ages. We bless thee, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As an exceedingly holy dwelling, O much suffering Stephen, thou hast him that rests in all the saints, 
abiding in thy heart unto all the ages. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. I implore thee, O Virgin, grace of God, with the sprinkling of the divine blood that was emptied out from the side of thy Son and God. Wash me clean of the filth, come upon me from wicked sin. Let every mortal leap for joy, enlightened by the Spirit, and let the nature of the incorporeal intelligences keep festival, honoring the sacred feast of the Mother of God, and let them cry aloud, Rejoice, O most blessed Theotokos, pure ever virgin. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Thou art glad, O God-inspired Stephen, as thou beholdest the orders of the angels, patriarchs, righteous, prophets, apostles, and all the just, dwelling with whom remember and protect those on earth who sincerely call thee blessed. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Like light of the daybreak, like a great sun, like a starry sky art thou, with the brightness of wonders and of holy wounds. O all much suffering Martyr Stephen, truly illuminating the minds of all that acclaim thee. Holy Martyr Stephen, pray to God for us. Having first cast down the principalities of darkness by their resolute contentions and asceticism, and the last thou strovest with yet greater resolve, consigning them to utter perdition, O Father Stephen, adornment of martyrs and boast of the righteous. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Thy glorious memorial lighteth the fullness of the earth today with the illuminating rays of the Spirit's gifts. As we now celebrate thereon with exceeding gladness, enlighten and sanctify us. O blessed of God, both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. O vessel of light, O grace of God, who art truly the strength of the sacred martyrs and the boast of all the righteous, save us who sing thy praise from perils, adversaries, and the inroads of enemies. Thou hast gained a double crown From Christ for thou exceedingly Did struggle in ascetic feats And as a martyr honoring The holy icon both of him and all the saints so Stephen with them now remember us. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honourable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, our hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, with the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy and life-giving cross of the Lord, and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, and the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes the Great, Brandon the Navigator, Oren of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all the isles, protectors of our monastery and our community. With the prayers of the Holy Venerable Martyr Stephen the New, and of those with him confessors for the holy icons, with the prayers of the Holy Martyr Irinarchus of Sevasti and those with him, with the prayers of St. Finhu of Bango and those with them whose memory we keep this day, and the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. 
and the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.